G'day, Blade Dickheads, vaping fucking bogan. Back once again for another Ridgy Didge review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you're all doing tremendo. Did I say that right? <laughs> I say that because we're gonna have a look at two Mexican mechanical tube mods today. Mexanical tube mods? Mexi mods? <laughs> They're from Fueled Mech. We have the Octane on the right here and the Nitro V2 on the left there. Both 21700 compatible. I've got the uh, QP Designs Addies on here, dickheads. I've got the uh, the Cali uh, V2 RDA and I've got the Fatality M25 on the top here, dickheads. And these two, they're fucking gorgeous. Don't think I've had, well, yeah, pretty sure I haven't had any mechanical mods from Mexico before. And uh, tell you what, dickheads, they know how to do it over there. They're doing it fucking right. These things are really, really nice and hard hitting and they look and feel great too. Let's take it for a ripper roo dickheads. Uh, in the QP uh, M25 Fatality, I have a couple of uh, aliens in here around about 0.1. And in the Cali V2 on the Octane, I have uh, about the same, a couple of aliens around 0.1. Awesome, awesome fucking performance from both of these. The switches are gorgeous, but we'll check out all the ins and outs in a fucking moment, dickheads. What I want to fucking talk about first, as always, is a little bit of vape advocacy. It's something we all need to do as members of this community, because in places like the United States, you've got governments and fucking counties and different states and cities trying to way over-regulate and even ban vaping sales in places like uh, San Francisco, which is pretty fucked up. If you haven't already fucking done your bit, then get down in the description, hit some of those advocacy links, join those calls to action, and support your fucking uh, community. And if you're in South Australia, then hit the link down there that'll tell you where to find your member of parliament and tell them, if they ain't pro-vaping, you ain't voting for them. All right, let's have a bloody beer. Today's beer is the other half of a collaboration on two beers between the Barossa Valley Brewing Co, which is local to me, and the Bucket Boys. This is a passion fruit and mango gauza. I think I'm saying that right these days. <laughs> so uh, they did two beers, these guys, as a collaboration, and uh, you can mix the two together or you can enjoy them individually, which is what I did. I had the first one uh, a week or two ago. This is the other half of it. Passion, it makes our industry special. Taste that shared passion in two beers with two equally passionate collaborators, Ben Miller and the Bucket Boys. Not your typical goza, rich with refreshing zest from an addition of 300 litres of real fruit. Enjoy individually or they are brewed to blend. Enjoy. 4.8 fucking percent dickheads. As I said, it is brewed here in South Australia uh, in the Barossa Valley. Not far from uh, yours fucking truly. But let's see how goes the second one. Well, there you go, dickheads. Mango by name and mango in complexion. Fairly yellowy look to it on the nose. Yeah, smells like a goza to me. Got that sort of uh, farmhousey, sort of slightly uh, salty smell to it with a mango waft. Cheers, cunts. Oh, fuck me. That is, wow, that is fucking passion fruity and mangoey. Holy shit. The passion fruit is really, really vibrant and prominent. Super, super fucking nice and uh, and real natural, but not weak. It's really fucking uh, quite a powerful passion fruit flavor there. A little bit tart, a little bit sort of sour. Nice little saltiness in there as well from the Goza sort of style. And uh, yeah, that fucking mango, really nice. The passion fruit's definitely more dominant, but the mango just kind of smooths it all out, gives us a little bit of a creaminess as well. That is fucking delicious and refreshing. Let's pair it up with a juice. Today's juice is from a Little Big Chef. It's the From The Bar range, which is uh, basically, you know, sort of drink uh, themed juices. This is a raspberry and passion fruit martini. You reckon that might go all right with our passion fruit bloody beer? I reckon it might too. Let's bloody see. Holy fuck, that is a lot of passion fruit. That is delicious. 
Yeah, Dickie, it's just a passion fruit overload there. The raspberry, it's kind of just sort of chilling underneath, but there's lots and lots of passion fruit from that fucking beer and from the uh, the liquid. Really nice juice, that one. I've liked most of the uh, little big chefs. Anyway, excuse my cold dickheads. Let's get down the up and bloody close. Let's break these... Blake these fuckers down, that's my son's name. We'll break these fuckers down and we'll have a squiz and uh, talk pros, cons, prices and everything else. Let's get in there and have a sticky beak. Okie fucking dokie dickhead. So this is the packaging your fueled mecht mod will come in. Just a nice little fucking boxy. If you slide her open, you'll find it's nicely presented. You got the octane mod here, you got the switch, you got a nice little uh, brass drip tip. 810 size that they include, which is quite nice. A little uh, authenticity kind of token thing made in Mexico. There you go. A uh, couple of uh, Fralians, which is pretty nice. You also get a little deck of cards, one talking about the company fueled mecht. You get a little kind of instruction diagram breakdown kind of thing. You get some warnings and safety info. You get the authenticity certificate. Serial number, material, signed off on, all the rest of it. And uh, a little bit about the coils. They are some uh, Fralians from Psy Coils, I believe. Psy Coils over, I guess they're Mexican coils. Um, and that's it, dickheads. So let's have a look at these two beauties. We got the uh, the Octane over here in black, and we have the uh, Nitro V2 here on the right. Now they do these in a bunch of different finishes. I believe they do brass as their sort of main, um, you know, material for the body and then different coatings and that sort of thing as well. So we'll have a look at the uh, Octane first. It's got a really nice, uh, very matte kind of um, rough, not rough, smooth but rough if you know what I mean. Uh, textured sort of finish to it. It's not the wrinkle black that we've seen on things like the Overpowered and the Bonzers and stuff like that. It's uh, it's a bit different but it's um, certainly not your normal matte black sort of stove finish. It's got a very, um, yeah, kind of Smooth sandpaper is the best way to describe it. Really quite like it. It looks nice. Feels nice in the hand too. It's kind of like a bit of a dumbbell. You've got a, a, a couple of thicker ends with a curve in the middle here. You've got some sort of squared off edges though, which look pretty nice. A little bit of an X engraving around there. You've got vent holes up the top there, engraved into the sort of pattern. You got the 510 connection. It is a hybrid mechanical mod dickhead. So remember with any hybrid mech mod, make sure that your pin, you see that pin there? Make sure that pin is sticking out from the threads on your atomizer. If that pin's not sticking out from the threads, don't be using it on a hybrid mechanical mod. So you got the serial number engraved in there, number 43, octane, nice threading, and it is a 25 millimeter taper on here. So if we screw on, the, uh, the Cali V2, it looks really nice, that 25 millimeter RDA on top there. And they look pretty nice as a kit. The drip tip is from District 5, if you're wondering. So we're moving our way down. We've got more vent holes uh, on the bottom here. We take off the switch. We've got a beautifully machined brass tube. It's very thick. One thing I point out uh, with this mod, it has got a fair bit of fucking weight to it, dickheads. It weighs uh, quite a bit more noticeably than other mechanical tube mods, so uh, just bear that in mind. But for those that like a hefty sort of thing, it definitely feels like it's got some quality to it. So I like that. Then we have the switch. The switch is the same on uh, both of these. All right, it's a not non-constant contact switch, but it does have a self-adjusting um, insulator in the top there, which I really like to see, and uh, a very nice button on the bottom there. All brass, simple engraving, nothing, nothing too crazy there, dickheads. And uh, yeah, self-adjusting. So you got a really, really big, solid copper contact there. So easiest way to take the switch apart is put a little bit of pressure on the button, a little bit of pressure on the insulator just to uh, take it off of the uh, contact and then take your uh, ceramic tweezers and just twist out your copper contact. And out she comes, really nice, big, solid, chunky piece of copper, really nicely machined, everything is super smooth. You got your insulator, you got the spring, that won't carry any current and then a really, really nicely machined button housing. And then you've actually got the button itself. And I don't know whether the camera would do it justice. I mean, it just looks like polished metal to, uh, to everyone. But I've got to say that this switch 
is super, super nice and smooth. Um, the way that this this machining in here, that that connection in there is just some of the smoothest machining that I've had on a switch um, for a long time. It reminds me of the Omen mod. It's, it's that smooth. It's the only thing that I can really think comes close to how smooth this is, is the Omen. It's got a fantastically well machined little button there. And yeah, really not a lot to it. You know, you just got a contact, you got a, a couple of springs, um, and that's it. So, uh, you know, only sort of downside to this type of design, um, not that it's happened to me, but you know, overuse, you can find that you sort of unscrew the contact. If you know you're pushing it in, it makes contact with your battery and then you maybe slightly twist the switch here, you can kind of undo it um, with this design, but I haven't had that happen to me. But yeah, quite a simple uh, little switch design there and, and yeah, that's about it, dickheads. Um, Battery, you can go in, you know, really positive or negative end first. It doesn't matter because you've got venting up the top and the bottom. But um, what I have noticed is, is the big, big contact on the switch. Some batteries may not make a very good connection with the positive end because your wrap might come over some of the area where the contact is. So you may find that you're better off going positive end up if your uh, battery wraps aren't, uh, aren't wide enough. But yeah, I'm using a Samsung 30T. It's what I would recommend for anybody using a 21700 mechanical mod. And uh, yeah, once you screw the switch in, no battery rattle side to side whatsoever. It's really, really nice and stiff. And um, yeah, that button, you'll see it come out once you've screwed it on um, into the mod. You'll see that button come back out where it should be and where you see it now. And yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. It's not a, a super short throw. It's got a bit of length to it, but it's not too long but it's more just how smooth and the amount of tension that the switch requires to make it fire. And it's just really, really fucking nice to use. And then we have the Nitro V2, which uh, has the same switch, exact same switch as the Octane, but obviously a different sort of body. And this paint job, fucking hell, isn't this nice? It's like a, a silvery gray white kind of finish to it. Feels super durable. Feels really, really thick and uh, and solid. Again, you've got a 25 millimeter beveling up the top here, a bit of engraving, serial number, Nitro V2. Again, hybrid top cap and that sort of thing. Venting going down both sides all the way from the top to bottom. Uh, and I know that some people are gonna be like, oh, that, that's a fucking Vader bloody uh, ripoff by um, H-Stone Mods. Um, yeah, it definitely has some similarities with the Vader because the Vader's got a whole bunch of holes going down the side, but the holes are a bit different. Um, the Vader doesn't have um, the ribbing going all the way around it like this one does. It only goes sort of halfway. It also doesn't have these divots. And I don't think you can fucking call anybody else copycat when you've got a fucking Darth Vader mask on the button, all right? <laughs> Which the Vader does. So, uh, yeah, I don't think they can go and fucking uh, worry too much about it. But to be honest, I think it's, uh, it's different enough. And, uh, yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice in the hand, that curve there. You've got a nice little sort of bauble on the end here to kind of wrap your, uh, your hand around. And, uh, yeah, she looks the fucking tits with a, a nice stainless steel Addy, I reckon. I mean, you can find a white Addy, maybe look good, but with a stainless Addy, it actually looks really nice. That white and, and silver looks really good. So, dickheads, I don't know whether there's a whole lot more else to fucking uh, really tell you about these two fuckers. Let's uh, jump back up top. Let's talk pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads. Bit of a squiz at the Octane and the Nitro V2. What do you reckon? I reckon they're pretty fucking sweet, dickheads. Really fucking well made. Very, very nice quality. Performance real decent too. But let's talk pros and bloody cons. What do we like, what do we not like about it? Well, I definitely love the machining and the build quality. Uh, I think this is the first Mexican made mech mod, first Mexi mod that I've had, and fuck me, they, they're doing it right. The, the machining on the exterior, the engravings, all really, really well done. Threading, perfect, and the switch, Fuck me, this is one of the smoothest switches that I have come across to date. Uh, the only thing that I think comes as close to the smoothness and just the feel of this switch, uh, as I said, is the um, Omen from Omen Mods, um, which, was a, which was a very fucking expensive one uh, we reviewed last year. 
Performance is a fucking massive pro with this one. Uh, it's right up there. It's one of the hardest hitting for sure. You know, put it up there with things like the reactor, which we did a little while ago. Um, it's a fucking hard hitter. Really, really good performer on this. Voltage drop, very minimal. It's got a bit of weight to it as well. If you like heavy mods, if, if heavy feels quality to you, then this definitely is gonna feel quality, especially the uh, Octane. There's a, a fuckload of weight there. Heavy is good, heavy is reliable. If it doesn't work, you can always hit him with it. <laughs> 21700 has definitely gotta be a fucking pro ski for me uh, with mech tubes definitely getting better performance out of a 21700, so I like that. I like that they've got venting in the top and the bottom, so it's up to you which way you orientate your battery. I think that's a nice little touch to let people make their own decision. And the paint jobs, the finishes on these are really fucking nice, uh, particularly this, uh, I think they call it silvery on their website. Um, it's, it's really unique, you know? It's not white, it's not silver, it's somewhere sort of in between, a pearlescent kind of finish. It's really, really nice. And this uh, sort of very textured matte black um, is nice too. It feels good in the hands. It's got a bit of a sort of rough but smooth texture to it. Um, but both the finishes are really, really solid. I don't reckon you're going to be chipping any paint off soon. So cons, what do we not like about these two? To be honest, dickheads, there's not much to complain about here. Um, only thing I'd really point out is both of them are quite big and hefty sort of mods. Um, they're reasonably tall for a, you know, a single battery mod. They're quite thick. Um, and both of them have a fair bit of mass, and so there is a fair bit of weight to them. So if you don't like heavy stuff, you know, and big things may not be up your bloody alley, but, um, you know, something to point out, not really a con. <laughs> Only other con might be some people prefer a constant contact switch. Uh, it is just, a, you know, more an old school self-adjusting um, nice switch, but some people might not, uh, you know, like that it's not constant contact. But apart from that, dickheads, I don't really have anything else to fucking whinge about. They're really, really well made, very nicely designed mechs. So the thing that about does me, dickheads, uh, Mexico, please keep it up. These are fucking awesome. Really, really well done. Love to see uh, more from this company and maybe uh, a few other mechs. I don't know, are there other other Mexican mech mod companies out there? We'd love to see what else is happening down in the, uh, the Southern Americas. Anyway, dickheads, that'll do me. So I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to check out what this Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on that little bell icon there so you do get notified. Notified. Even if you subscribe, turn it off, turn it on again, because YouTube, it's a bit fucky. There's no affiliate links here. There's no paid reviews or jump in the queue fees. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on a product. But to keep doing that, well, a bit of public support is obviously required. So as I said, via my Patreon, I do some special content. My vlogs and bogs are on there, and I do some competitions and shit you won't see here on YouTube. And all of that keeps me doing my thing. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off, or your bloody tits off. I don't care what it is you're vaping on, whether it comes from south of the border or fucking China. As long as it's not banging the bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.